competition. He's won quite a few at the strip, and he's getting better. Uh, can I have the handle, or do you expect me to with my finger? <laughs> Tracing and pat out two most important in his life. Thank you. How's it going, George? Well, I expect to be done at noon in about a week. <laughs> Tell me again, George, to win the national. Huh? We're gonna blow them off, man. Those other shoes won't even know what hit them. When the lights come down, it's gonna be to the floor and wail. And Big Bad Willis is gonna do it. To what do you attribute your success, Mr. Big Bad Willis? Split-second timing, fantastic reflexes, a keen eye hit. <laughs> is that all? Hmm, pretty foxy mechanic. Hey, it's Tony Nancy. Hi, George. Hi there. Hi, Pat. Hi, Tony. How's everything going? Pretty good. How's the digger coming? Out of sight, shaping up. Uh, say, that idea about the cam was good. How about trying it this Sunday? Sure, fine. What else you been doing with this little flower? Well, I changed it from a 3.9 to a 4.10, and I moved my controls in so I can uh, you know, grab them quicker. Mm -hmm. And I changed the uh, brake from a uh, pull operated to a push operated. I think that'll be a lot easier. To As captain of the United States drag racing team, Tony Nancy has toured all over the world, taking on all challengers. Typical of the kind of guy that's really into drag racing, Tony unselfishly shares his years of experience and technical knowledge. Especially with George, who has proven his ability as a driver and won enough prize money to build his own dragster. The big thing in the air is the upcoming Winter Nationals. George will be driving a sponsored double-A fueler and could win more than enough to finish his own machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like magnesium that you've made that whole yeah. thing out of. Oh, that'd be nice and light and strong. Well, I've got a lot of things to do. Can I count on you being out of the strip study? Sure, Captain. Anderson is a different sort of guy. He doesn't have many friends his own age. He seems to feel more secure with people several years younger than himself. He buys and sells marijuana. Max doesn't understand the kind of hard work and concentration George has put into building his dragster. But then he doesn't understand what it means to have a commitment to something. Potheads seem to have one thing in common. The belief that work and serious thought are a drag. I was wondering if you could lay a couple numbers on them. Oh, it's been kind of low lately. I don't know. Um, I'll have to check with the man. Until recently, oh, George has smoked marijuana only occasionally, oh, yeah, no just to be sociable. Drop by later, uh, but for some reason, he's starting to buy, and that's a whole new scene. felt pretty good all the way. I think we're on the right track here. Uh, incidentally, I didn't want to say anything yesterday with Pat there, but uh, I hear you've been blowing the smoke, too. What do you mean? I mean like grass. Who told you this? I don't get up tight. I'm just telling you that I don't want to know anything about it, one way or the other. Only alcohol, pills, dope, none of that stuff makes it, pal. You don't need it here. This is no toy. It's got 1,500 horsepower, puts out 8,000 RPM. You've seen it, George. You've seen guys blow up just for one goofy mistake. We don't need any fuzzy-headed guys who feel beautiful inside and end up dead outside. I've seen some of your friends. I wouldn't let them come five feet of this car. This is real. You're going to have to choose. Man, I really resent that. You think I'm some kind of dope fiend or something. 
I don't go around having withdrawals or go out of my head and kill people. Man, that's somebody else's trip. George is gradually assuming the role of a regular user. He feels he can handle marijuana and resents being challenged. Because booze, the same people who are giving out the lectures are going home and they start belting on martinis. They take a pill to put themselves to sleep and a pill to diet on. Everyone's entitled to their own trip. The choice is not really between alcohol, pills, or marijuana. The choice is whether or not you want to be dependent on any of them. Most people stay away from drugs of any kind for fear of the unknown. With marijuana, a hallucinogen, there is good reason for fear. Not everybody, George. I think Tony is right. I'd really be afraid to try it. Winner is George Willis. Turned in a 667, 215.82 miles per hour in this afternoon's final elimination round for double A viewers here at the beach. This makes it three in a row for Willis, an 18-year-old rookie driver from Redondo Beach, California. He picks up $500 in prize money for the number one bracket and qualifies for tomorrow's annual Far West Championship. Be sure to be on hand. Tomorrow at 1.30, the action begins. And if, if anybody can drive, George can drive. The guy is leaving Out of... Hey, George! Damn, he's fine. You're all right. Hey, George! Come on now. Come on. 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 George? Max. Hey, uh, appears I'm going to need a little help from my friend. Oh, I got busted. Yeah. Some Yehu left a, a roach in the back of the bus, and they busted all of us. I'm calling to notify you we have your son Robert in custody for possession of marijuana. No, ma'am, there's no mistake. He was picked up along with three other people. In communities throughout the nation, marijuana has become a major problem. It has been the cause for many police records on otherwise law-abiding young people. Do you think there's any possibility of you bailing me out of here? Well, man, you're lucky because I won $500 today. Top eliminator. That's great. Let's celebrate. Um, as soon as you get me out of here, let's go to my place and we'll have a party. Okay, out of sight. Hey, listen, where are you right now? Uh, Inglewood Police Department. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go see a bail bondsman, and I'll be right down. We'll have you out in no time. Okay, groovy. Thank you. and make yourself at home and I'll be right with you. George, I don't know. No, really we've got to get together on this. We're celebrating, remember? Yeah, but... You can't possibly know anything about it unless you try it. Pisces, you know. Water people. We're kind of special. Oh, here, let me lay a number on you. You have a roach clip? Yeah, here you go. And we'll sit on here and do our number. Now, the object is to get all that smoke into your lungs and as much as you can and hold it just for as long as you can. Do I tell you need a warning? Now, come on. It won't hurt to try. I mean... Take it. You can never tell if marijuana will hurt you. It is inconsistent and well, unpredictable. In. Take it all some down. grass may be weak and thing. some very strong. And each person will react differently to the same batch. <coughs> nah, you'll get better. What's the effect on it? Well, just take a few more totes off this and you can find out. Keep going. Oh, come on. Most pot smokers feel compelled to turn others on and will exert pressure on their closest friends. Anyone who does not share his fascination of getting stoned is an outsider. Not isn't that bad? Just take the joint 
and get it all into your lungs. Marijuana's immediate group system. The stronger the grass, the greater the distortion of perception and judgment. Depending on the personality and mood of the user, illusions or hallucinations may occur. Sights and sounds are exaggerated. Associations may be disorganized, and time and space relationships are lost. You may have a feeling of well-being, or just the opposite, great anxiety. You are not yourself. You are not in control. All right, that's it. You go up Hawaii next summer? Yeah. The whole summer. At a critical time when young people must make decisions that will shape their future, the people who become dependent upon marijuana are dependent on an escape that makes the unreal seem beautiful and the reality of life seem unnecessary. No. Dad, wake up. Come on, Dad. It's no time to crash. We're going to get some munchies. Come on. with me and lie down in the back of the bus. Hunger and thirst are common side effects to smoking pot, and frequently the users will drive a car before his reflexes have returned to normal. loss of judgment, the user has a false sense of self-confidence. The driver's awareness and perception are altered, particularly as they relate to time and space. He may be traveling at a comfortable 20 miles an hour and feel no need to slow down to turn a sharp corner. He may become hung up on a visual experience or a physical activity totally unrelated to driving. Hey, Chick, hurry up!
before I had a chance even to move off, he, he came around extreme speed and he hit me and that pushed my car over this way a bit. Just a minute here, how far down the street did you notice him? Well, I don't really know. I mean, I was, I sort of was stopped and as I sort of looked one way and then I went to look the other, the time I looked back, he, he was on me. I mean, he just came roaring around here and uh, I think he had to be drunk or something because he just, he had to have seen me sitting here, officer. I, I mean, I just pulled out the driveway up the street and just drove down. We've got to get together on this. We're celebrating, remember? We've got to get Yeah, but... You can't celebrate on anything about it unless yeah. you try it. We I wouldn't let him come five feet of this car. This is real. Take it down in deep. You're going to have to choose. What's the effect on it? Oh, take it. 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 This is real. You're going to have to choose. Real. This is real. You're going to have to choose. This is real. You're going to have to choose. decisions about that they love most. As for decisions regarding marijuana, there's no mystery about great inner revelation. It's a simple distortion, a great escape. Timing, fantastic reflexes, a keen eye, and a cool head. <laughs> 